Welcome back to The Ed Show. This is a story for the folks who take a shower after work. Republicans are delivering lies and misinformation about the post office again. Midway through the fiscal year, the Postal Service issued a quarterly press release turning an operating profit into a loss. Now, the report is misleading. In fact, the Postal Service is actually making a million-dollar operating profit for the first six months of this fiscal year. Now, the National Association of Letter Carriers says the Postal Service has been turning an operating profit since October of 2012. Instead of truth and fact, Patrick Donahoe, uh, he, of course, is the Postmaster General, and the Republicans would rather report doom and gloom. The official release went on to say, without comprehensive legislation reform, the Postal Service will be unable to make the required $5.7 billion retiree health benefit prefunding payment to the United States Treasury due by September 30th. Republicans want this American institution to fail. That's my read on it. Conservatives have been attacking the post office resources for years. The 2006 Postal Accountability Enhancement Act forced the agency to prepay 75 years worth of future health care costs for retirees in a 10-year window. Well, that was 2006. Here we are, 2014. Not another business in the country operates like this. They don't have standards like that. So what are the real numbers and who's telling the truth? Joining me tonight, President of the American Postal Workers Union, Mark Dimenstein. Mr. Dimenstein, good to have you with us tonight. I appreciate your time. Uh, from Very your, glad to be here. You, you tell us the story about the numbers. Is Patrick Donahoe, the Postmaster General, telling the truth about the postal revenue gains? No. Patrick Donahoe is only telling a little piece of the story. The fact is, is there's $1 billion of operating profit in the first six months of this fiscal year. He paints it as gloom and doom of a large multi-billion dollar debt, but that debt is based on a manufactured phony crisis created by Congress in 2006, which they have refused to fix, that forces the post office funds that are created by the users, not the taxpayers, to be shifted over to the federal treasury, leaving the post office choked and high and dry, and then the gloom and doom is what's used to promote an agenda of privatization and public services being sliced and diced so, so some private entities can, can make a quick buck, and that's not what's good for the people of, of, of this country. So the United States Postal Service made this statement. They are claiming, those that say that uh, all the Postal Service needs from Congress is help with restructuring its retiree health benefit plan are misguided. Nothing can be further from the truth. Our liabilities exceed our assets by 42 billion, and there is a need for more than 10 billion to invest in new delivery vehicles, package sortation equipment, and other deferred investments. The Postal Service hasn't been making the retiree health benefit prefunds payments because we can't. What's your response to that? The, the uh, Postal Service future retiree health benefits are well funded. They're funded at about, uh, at about $50 billion right now. And no other uh, company, no other federal agency is being forced to prefund 75 years in advance. So the, the prefunding can be easily fixed. And along with that, there have to be some other creative things done to make sure that the Postal Service is vibrant for generations to come. For example, there's a lot of interest in basic postal banking. That would not only serve great needs that the public has, the, 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 the uh, millions of people that are unbanked and so on, but it would bring needed revenue into the post office and it would be all, all performed in a, in, a, in a trusting environment. So there are many things that can be done, but the underlying cause of the quotes debt yeah. and the gloom and doom that's being talked about is this prefunding that can and should be fixed. Okay, they say in their statement, our liabilities exceed our assets by 42 billion. But they don't say whether that takes into account the, the, the prefund that's been taking place for the last eight years, which you say has got $50 billion in the fund right now. So right. it, it's almost like asking a business, are you making any money? And then the answer question back is, well, are you counting on who's paying for the lights? I mean, well, it, I mean, is this a matter of what we're what you're accounting for? As I understand it, they're forty two billion dollars that they're talking about. Is this prefunding requirement going into the future? It's it's funded at at at, at 50 billion. They're saying they want another forty two billion based on this 
2006 law that's being used to undermine the entire postal system. So it's an easy fix where we can add a lot of creativity, enhance services, not only banking, licensing, notary, uh, later hours, weekend hours, and ways that the Postal Service yeah. can be that much more viable. And look, th this is a national treasure. And the gloom and the PMG is, is entrusted to lead this great institution. And instead of preaching gloom and doom, he should be talking about what, what a great future the Postal Service has. E-commerce. There's an explosion in package, in package delivery yeah. in those systems. That's something that the post office has set up to serve the people of this country well, like, like no other agency, no other business, no other infrastructure in the country. We're, we're going to do this story every single time they come out with numbers that are simply not correct. And this is government involvement, government takeover. They came in and forced you to do this, and it makes the bottom line look like, oh, gosh, we have to privatize the Postal Service. Your tax dollars, folks, do not pay for deliveries. It's all done by user fees. They hire more veterans than anybody else in the country, and all the Republicans want to do is privatize it. Mark Demonstein, great to have you back with us Thank tonight. You, I appreciate your time. That's The Ed Show. I'm Ed Schultz, Politics Nation with Reverend Alan Sharpton. starts right now. Good evening, Rev. Good evening, Ed.